Uh, Mr. Agosta, hello. Uh, my question for you is this. Does does Garrity apply in the Leobor context? Yes. So in the interrogation so, phase, yes. Okay. So so and that I think that's an important issue for the public to understand that 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 applies both in the criminal and the and the Leobor context that a statement that a police officer under investigation has the same rights as every other American, which is the right not to incriminate themselves. When they're given an order by a superior to give a statement, then that statement and any evidence that is derived therefrom cannot be used, certainly not in a criminal prosecution against them. Is it true that that principle also applies in the Leobor context? It does, and your question is very insightful because I've been confronted with some challenging uh, scenarios when police chiefs reach out to me to discuss conduct by a police officer that appears to be criminal in nature. Um, and at some juncture, they have to make a determination as to whether or not they want to garretize that officer for purposes of a Leobor investigation and essentially uh, blunt any opportunity for criminal prosecution. So it, it does present some difficult decisions for police chiefs to make. Now, my standard practice uh, with all police chiefs is to say, look, if the conduct is conspicuously criminal or there is sufficient evidence uh, to indicate that uh, crimes are afoot, uh, you best go to the attorney general's office to vet that and determine whether or not the case is viable for criminal prosecution. Because at some juncture, uh, Leobor will reactivate itself. Now, Leobor, um, has this state put provision. So if there's a criminal prosecution, uh, there can be no administrative hearings. So essentially, uh, and I've been presented with this circumstance on a number of occasions, we wait, we hope, and we pray that your office is successful in obtaining a conviction because that obviously makes the administrative proceeding much easier. And in many cases, it's simply a matter of uh, admitting uh, the uh, certified copy of the judgment of conviction. Uh, but yes, Garrity is, is alive and well, but it, it does require a police chief to make some judgment as to whether or not the conduct uh, of the police officer is worthy of criminal prosecution and whether or not criminal prosecution uh, should uh, be prioritized over Leobor employment discipline. If I could just follow up on that a little bit. So so I'm not sure I understand, understood totally your answer. Let's assume that there is a criminal investigation. Certainly, as the prosecutors, we could not see that compelled statement. Uh, that would have a negative impact on our criminal prosecution. My question is, if the attorney general's office decided um, or grand jury decided or trial jury decided that charges were either not warranted or the, the police officer in question was not indicted or was not convicted at trial. Could that compelled statement be used in a disciplinary proceeding under Leobor, notwithstanding that it is compelled? For that administrative purpose, could that compelled statement be used? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you read Garrity very closely, you'll see that uh, the officer in the Garrity case, there were orders issued to comply with the internal investigation. So they had no alternative but to comply. They were given the proverbial Hobson's choice. Either they complied with the order, answered the questions, or they would face disciplinary sanctions. So a, com a compel basically, uh, General, a compelled order uh, or an order compelling an officer to cooperate to answer questions may certainly be used in Leobor. Uh, and I've had cases where officers have refused to answer questions, they've been directed to answer questions, they've refused, um, and that results in additional charges of insubordination. All right, so I, I just want to make, make that point, and, and you helped me make it, which is that what's available to a criminal prosecutor 
is not necessarily the same information that's available to a administrative proceeding handled by you, say, under LEABOR, because many times, you know, that evidence is critical to figuring out exactly what happened, and yet a criminal investigator or criminal prosecutor may not have access to it because it's compelled, and, and that is consistent with the right against self-incrimination. And I, and I thought that it was, that was a point worth making, particularly given that the public is following these issues very closely. So thank you. Yes, and uh, also the public should also bear in mind that under Leobor, if a criminal prosecution should fail, if the officer should be acquitted uh, under the highest standard of proof uh, that's at play in criminal prosecutions, Leobor actually requires, it mandates that the officer be reinstated with full back pay. And I think that that is an extremely onerous provision because oftentimes, while a criminal prosecution may not be successful given the higher burden of proof, an administrative prosecution under Leobor has a solid chance of being successful. But what happens is the municipality has to pay all of that money uh, up front to the officer following acquittal of a criminal charge only to have to start over to move to terminate or otherwise discipline the police officer. So that is a very burdensome provision financially on the taxpayers of the state.